It might sound ridiculous that a 20 something living in a two room apartment in the former Soviet Republic of Georgia can swing the entire U.S. presidential election. But that possibility is exactly what's behind Facebook and Google's recent crackdown on fake news sites. Sites that, in the run up to the vote, ran headlines such as WikiLeaks confirms Hillary sold weapons to ISIS, then drops another bombshell. And Pope Francis shocks world, endorses Donald Trump for president, releases statement. But who gets to be the arbiter of what we are allowed to say or read online? Here now is journalist and technologist Tim Poole. He's been following the fake news trends for years now. Uh, you made your name welcome, Tim. Hi, thanks for having Hi. me. Hi. You made your name uh, documenting a lot of stuff that was happening at Occupy Wall Street. Yeah. That there was, there was a need for immediate digital news and you helped fill that void. Why is Facebook and Google cracking down on these fake news sites so worrisome to you? Well, uh, the, to have tech companies deciding what news is real and what news isn't yeah. is just scary, right? I think if, if you're familiar with what happened with the Facebook trending problem, they originally had a staff. They said that the staff was biased and was filtering out conservative news. And there, that was someone within Facebook, mm -hmm. a conservative yeah. who came forward and said that. And so they decide, okay, let's get rid of that staff altogether yeah. and let the computer handle it. And then what happens is fake news stories start dominating the trending cycle. So, you know, we're between a rock and a hard place, right? We, we, we've tried filtering it, but people have biases. Yeah. And we're getting pretty extreme in our biases. Or you can let the robots take over, and then it's just fake news, fake news. So what's the answer? I mean, what do you do? Do you, do you try and get a group of people? who are maybe politically diverse to come up with appropriate news to put in the feed? Uh, do, you, do you spray the robots with water when they're bad? Uh, d uh, journalism is supposed to be the solution to this problem, right? Yeah. But the, 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 the journalism doesn't work anymore. The business model of writing factual news is expensive with no guarantees the audience will actually care about what you're, what you're, the story you're telling. Yeah. I mean, news is essentially free now. It's yeah. very different than it was 10 or 15 years ago. So if, if someone in their 20s came to you and said, I want to start a successful media company, what would you tell them? Well, the politically correct response would be you've got to, do, you've got to work hard, you've got to find good stories, and uh, follow the ethics in journalism to the T. But the real answer is, look, if you want to start a media company and you want to make a ton of money, yeah. you make fake news. Yeah, uh, there's a guy, Justin Kohler, who yeah. has Disinfo Media, makes ten to $30,000 a month. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had the URL denverguardian.com and said that FBI agents suspected in Hillary email leaks found dead in apparent murder-suicide. And, uh, you know, the guy makes a ton of money. He's a Democrat. He's a Hillary supporter. And he said he just wanted to show how fervent the alt-right was. Do you buy that? Not at all. I mean, he's also a relatively well-off person now because of yeah. these fake stories. I, I read that story. He claimed that he was trying to infiltrate the alt-right echo chamber. Yeah. If that were true, he wouldn't have put ads on the site in the first place. He, he, he knew what he was doing, yeah. uh, in my opinion. And... It's, you know, when you think about, the, it's, it's really, really easy to make a viral story. It's yeah. so easy. Write a story about a Trump protester who accidentally kills somebody, or, or, and then you, you watch every Trump supporter share it. Write a story about a racist cop, you know, violating someone's rights, and every liberal will share that story. Yeah. And people have figured this out. And so they're like, hey, I can write whatever I want. No, no one's going to do anything about it, and I'm going to make a ton of money. Oh, man. We really yeah. are stuck between a rock and a hard place. Well, there is a solution, though. Okay. Okay, if we're hearing this guy is making ten to $30,000 a month, yep. and he's writing fake stories about the FBI and Hillary, well, shouldn't someone sue him for libel? Who would sue him? Well, if the you're... FBI agent is dead, clearly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, the FBI is a department. Uh, yeah. it's the, I mean, look, it's their responsibility to make sure fake stories... All right, so you right. say take it to the courts, flesh this stuff out, and maybe do down. a better job as a reader and consumer of finding more than one source. Well, as journalists, we need to take care of the problem, right? Yeah. We need to, uh, and as subjects of these stories, yep. if, if someone lies about Hillary, Hillary's got to do something about it. All right, Tim Poole, thank you so much. I appreciate Thanks your time. Me. Really fascinating. Hope to talk to you again. Thank you. Very good.